Hi, and welcome back. So, the next video is real short. It's just outlining the general components of a thesis in the order in that you normally find them in a thesis. Let me point out, though, that this is not the recommended order in that you would want to write them. It's just how you assemble them in the end. You usually write them in a completely different order, and I'll come to that on one of the next videos. But first of all, what are the general components of a thesis? Well, the first component is obviously the title of your thesis. Ideally, this should tell the reader in one sentence what you have found. You have a bit more space in the abstract, so you summarize typically on half a page, at most one page, why you did it, what you did, and what you found as a result. Again, in a very short and concise way. The next chapter is usually the introduction. So, in that introduction, you should describe the background and the significance of your studies without trying to write a large review on everything that you have read during your thesis. That's not what you want. You want to lead the reader to the end of that discussion, which should be the central question that you have been trying to address. So, the central question or questions of your thesis should go to the end of the introduction. So, the reader should now understand why you even did the study and what you were trying to address. So, the central question is really what you are trying to communicate to the reader, because that will make him understand why you even did the work. The next chapter is Materials and Methods, usually considered quite boring by many people who are trying to write it. However, it's still important, because that's the only way how you can tell a future student in your lab or in some other lab how to repeat your experiments. And your experiments are only valid if they are reproducible. Otherwise, it's fairly useless. So that's why the materials and methods are an important section. There you tell the reader what kind of material you have been using in your experiments and how exactly you were setting up the experiments. The next chapter is about the results. In the results section, you describe the experiments that you have done and the observations that you made. And usually what's embedded in the results section is the figures, that is, images that will show to the reader what you have observed. So, within the results section, you find the figures. And the figures are not just there to decorate the results section, but they are crucial to make your results valid and credible to the reader. That's how the reader can test whether he or she would agree with what you describe as your observations. The last big chapter is the discussion section. There you try to put your result in a more general perspective. You compare those results and your observations with what you can find in the literature, and you both comment on agreements with the literature and also on disagreements with previous reports on a similar topic. That's what you do in the discussion. Some people would also include a perspective of future experiments and of future studies that they think will be worthwhile when following up on their work. The next chapter contains the references. That's the literature that uh, you have been using and that you have been building up on while doing your experiments and while writing up your thesis. So, you haven't done all that just out of the blue. You have done it because you were previously reading about the results of someone else and that's what you are trying to communicate in the reference section, where you just list all these pieces of literature. And finally, you usually end your thesis with the acknowledgement 
uh, chapter. So in the acknowledgements, you typically thank your advisor, you thank your lab mates, especially those who have specifically contributed to your experiments. You also thank anyone who provided you with advice, with material or with some methods, whether or not he or she is a member of uh, your lab. So you don't forget to thank anyone who really contributed to the science of your project. You also acknowledge people who were contributing financially. Maybe you got a stipend, so that also goes into the acknowledgements section. And some people also include a personal part in that and then they thank their parents or they um, thank uh, their friends. You can do that if you want to, but keep it short. Those things should not cover an extensive uh, amount of space in your thesis. So those are the general components of your thesis. And uh, what I'll be trying to tell you now is how you would typically start writing your thesis. All you have in front of you is an empty screen on your computer and now you're trying to fill it. So that's a challenge and I'll try to cover that in the next video. And then I'll come to the order in that I would suggest writing your thesis. And that's, as I said, that's not the order of how they appear in the final version of it. So thanks very much. See you then.